Morgana, the basic system that controls the world, was imbued with an artificial personality. Her creator, Harold, had bestowed upon her the role of mother to the ultimate AI, Aura, but she rejected it. Instead, in order to preserve herself, she chose to imprison Harold within the network. And immediately after Aura was born, Morgana decided to delete her. When they learned this, Kite and his friends set out for their final challenge, to resurrect Aura. Oh, it's you. The barriers have been lifted, they're all gone. We can go back and forth freely now. Isn't that wonderful? Tell me, do you happen to know where Elk is? I don't remember. My memory these days is fuzzy. So, who are you? Elk. Who am I? You're Mia, of course. I have no memory. <laughs> it's true. in the world. The only memory I have is when I'm in the world. No! Stop it! Mia! I... I want to say it's me! The true identity of Mia, the cat-like character, was actually a wandering AI program. The sixth phase, Maha. <laughs> It's unclear why the sixth phase was the only one to take the form of an NPC. This was yet another important sample case for Project GU to consider. Was it possible to establish a character with the Morgana Factor and put the powers of the eight phases of the epitaph under a player's control? Maho, the sixth phase, was destroyed, thus causing Mia to be erased as well. Elk, the Wavemaster, had lost an irreplaceable companion. He mourned her deeply. Now their quest had reached the point of no return. After collecting all her segments, Kite received Aura's help and was able to destroy the seventh phase, Tarbos.
In order to cover up the unfortunate fact that several gamers had collapsed into a coma while playing the world, CC Corp planned to destroy their servers. So to Kite and the others, their greatest enemy may very well have been the greedy, power-hungry humans in charge of the company. If they succeeded, and the world servers were destroyed, Kite and his friends would never be able to revive the coma patients. Only two enemies remained, Kubia and the eighth and final phase. How would he fight the two of them? Pressed by time and grasping desperately for an answer, Kite finally met Harold's pseudo-personality deep in an infected area of a dungeon. As well as the newly free Aura. Just a little more. It's no use. This guy is totally gone. Aura, I have something I want to ask you. You said that I shouldn't fight Kubia, but why? Kubia is the shadow. When there is light burning in the darkness, a shadow is born. When the bracelet appeared in this world, Kubia was born as well. The bracelet and Kubia are the opposite sides of the same coin. Therefore, if you defeat Kubia, the bracelet will be destroyed. Kubia must have already known that, and that's why it kept running away. Kubia will no longer run away. Because... because I have finally been released. What do you mean? Massive data believed to be the wave is heading in your direction. That's the last one! Destroy it! Traveler, take this to heart. It is darkest before the dawn. Run away! It is not too late! We'll defeat it! And end this! No, it's not. That is...
Kite finally found the truth behind the world. Aura was the child Harold had dreamt of having with Emma Wieland. The bracelet and Kubia were two sides of the same entity, and Kubia was the anti-existence of the bracelet. To defeat Kubia, Kite would have to abandon the bracelet. But without the bracelet's power behind it, how could he possibly resist Morgana? Do you think we can really defeat it? Black Rose, strike my bracelet. You want me to do what? Hey, what the hell are you saying? If they're two sides of the same coin, then this would settle it. But the bracelet, it's... Forget about the bracelet, we're in danger. <laughs> if you can't do it... Oh, all right, fine, I'll do it. I'll do it, so shut up! Kite decided that the only way to defeat Kubia once and for all was to destroy the bracelet. To do so, he was forced to enlist the help of Black Rose. Kite believed that the revived Aura had enough power to stop the cursed wave of Morgana. That's what Epitaph of Twilight meant. Twilight refers to a time of day that contains both light and darkness. If the epic poem had in fact been referring to dawn instead of dusk, then that must mean that Aura would bring light to the world. Along with Aura and his other companions, Kite faced off against the eighth phase, Corbenic. Joining them were Kazu and Sieg, who had regained consciousness with the resurrection of Aura as well as Kite's close friend, Orca. To win this battle, Kite would have to beat not only Corbenic, the eighth phase, but also Morgana, the source of all the phases. However, in the face of Corbenic's relentless assault, Kite's companions fell one by one. Then, The brutal fight came to an end in an unexpected way. Aura sacrificed her own life on the tip of Kite's sword. Self-sacrifice 
It was the final act necessary for Aura to awaken as the ultimate AI. It was a bitter irony. Aura had finally become the ultimate AI. She attained a wisdom beyond that of humanity, and in doing so, she formed a new system. A better system in which the world could exist. Yes. It was a far greater dream than any of us at Project GU had ever hoped to see fulfilled. Genesis of Ultima. That's what it began to be called on the net. The battle by kites.hackers that led to the birth of the ultimate AI, Aura. But who was a member of Dot .hackers? And who wasn't? I'm sure that whomever is reading this journal is wise enough to understand the futility in trying to answer that. These people weren't interested in being called heroes or taking credit for saving the world. They did it to save the people they loved, to protect them. It was with their own faith that they fought. Everyone dreams of a hero, but most of us can only catch glimpses of them buried in the pages of a journal. And so, it was from this point that Project GU truly began.